because I forgot to turn my mic on. All right, so we'll just start over. Nobody saw that, right? Just clean slate. Good morning, and welcome to Glory Day, and welcome to people being in our sanctuary. It may be a little weird right now for those of you who are sitting in the sanctuary because the live feed that goes out will be behind me, so you will see double me uh, when I'm up here. And if that's too much for you, just put a little visor uh, and try not to, okay? Uh, we welcome the, you who are here in person and those of you who are joining us at home. It is a great day to be together. It is our communion Sunday. Uh, it is an opportunity for us to remember the saints uh, who are part of our lives, uh, and we will be celebrating those as we move through the service. Uh, as always, uh, there will be a couple of things happening here that won't happen out in uh, the television land, uh, and there will be some things that happen there that won't happen here. So just a reminder, we will not be singing, we will not be speaking. Uh, you can mouth things quietly, but we're trying to do the strictest, safest way of being together. We may at some point be able to relax those, but at this point, we're going to keep those pretty strict. Those of you at home are welcome to sing, uh, as you have in the past, or if you've never sung before, just don't start now if you don't know that you can sing, all right? Uh, anyway, so we're glad that you're here, and communion is going to be sort of the weirdest moment for us, and so I just want to explain. Those of us who are up on the stage will actually receive communion during the service, those who are at home will be receiving communion from each other at home during communion time. You will be receiving communion elements that have been blessed as you leave today. All right, so we'll, we'll just explain things as we go. But welcome to worship. We will begin, as always, with an opening prayer. Holy and gracious God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for the opportunity for us to gather in unison, virtually and in person. Thank you, O oh God, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon this community. Thank you for the ways that we celebrate one another's triumphs and we share the burden of each other's pains and sorrows. God, on this day, on All Saints Sunday, a Sunday when we remember those who have died and those who have been saints to us throughout our lives, may their memory be perpetuated for over and over again. Holy God, bless this time together. Amen. We'll begin worship together with our litany. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the downtrodden, and the despairing. Blessed are those who mourn, who are grieving. Blessed are the ones who seek justice and righteousness. Blessed are we when we love our neighbors and seek their needs. Blessed are we all when we seek to serve others in God's name. Let us worship together, serving one another and serving our mighty God. Amen. Welcome back, church. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning a song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three <coughs> persons, a blessed trinity. Cherubims and seraphims falling down before thee, which what an art and evermore shall be.
Through the eye of a sinful man A glory may not see Cause only thou art holy There are none beside thee Perfect in power Love and purity Holy, holy, holy Your God Almighty Cause all thy works shall praise thy name In earth and sky and sea Holy, holy, holy Merciful and mighty God in three persons Blessed Trinity Blessed Trinity Welcome back. Two of our musicians who've joined us uh, as we've been uh, to move indoor. Yao Zhu uh, and Aiden have joined us. And for those of you uh, out there and here, Chris has been our steady through this to just have a couple of bodies uh, in the sanctuary. So thank you all very much. One of the things that is an important part of our church is our statement of faith. It defines who we are. It tells us how we live into the world. It's one of those things that we share in the way that we walk our lives. It's one of those things that people see as we minister, as we share and care for others. We invite you at home to read along with the statement of faith. We find our approach to God through the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, who is our model for living. And we recognize the faithfulness of other paths, which may also lead people to an experience of God. We stand in God's grace, and we live that grace in our attitudes and actions toward one another. We understand the church as a community of people who together make up the body of Christ as we strive to serve the spiritual, emotional, and physical needs of others. We are inclusive as Christ was and welcome all people seeking a closer relationship with God we believe that the questions are as important as the answers, that living the mystery is a more sacred position than church tradition and doctrine, and we strive to love all, serve all, in Jesus' name, as we proclaim our mystery of faith, that Christ died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Over the last couple of weeks, I have been gathering some pictures of the saints in your life. I will tell you that a few of these are still living saints that some folks wanted to share. Many of them, though, are folks that they, folks who shared images of people that they lost. And so uh, we put this movie together. Yao Ju uh, played the soundtrack. So enjoy remembering the saints of our lives. <laughs>
And I would love if we had kids here yet, but we really don't. So uh, I'm going to do a kid's sermon like I do normally uh, to the kids who are at home. And I'm not sure exactly where I'm supposed to be looking. Thank you. Over there. Guys, we're, we're, we're figuring this out as we go. So give us a lot of grace today, uh, please. So one of the things that happened this weekend was uh, Halloween. And I know a lot of you kids saw, uh, you know, went dressed up, did all kinds of fun stuff. We had a pumpkin painting uh, a- activity yesterday for kids and families. We had seven families who were here yesterday making these beautiful uh, pumpkins. A couple of them were like cartoons. Some of you did some cartoons. Uh, a couple of you did uh, some kind of scary cartoon kind of characters. A few made theirs into unicorns, uh, which just was so cute. Uh, and one of the things that happened is the kids would work for a while and then the paint needed to dry, so they would run down the hill. Uh, and they would run and they'd climb the trees and all kinds of stuff. A couple of times I thought we were going to have to run down there and rescue a few of them. There's a culvert uh, down there. Any of you who've uh, ever walked down there, uh, you know that there's an open drainage uh, culvert down there. Uh, And a couple of times, uh, I know in the past, we've actually had to retrieve a couple of children. Uh, Jack Mohorn. Yesterday, I thought we might also be needing to uh, get a couple of uh, kids, but it was two little girls, these sisters, uh, and they dressed up in unicorn outfits, and one of them uh, was sort of a, uh, a regular unicorn, and the other was a rainbow unicorn. And they went down there, and they were, had sticks, and they were poking into the culvert, and they were looking in there. And I kept thinking one of them gonna, was going to go in there. It just looked like they're going to go in. I mean, Patrick and the other kids had been out there, and uh, they got really close to it. And then the older girl kind of went, boom, and the little girl sort of ran away. And I asked them when they came back up, I said, did you guys have a good time? Uh, And the older sister said, oh, I'm having such a good time. This is so cool. And the little girl said, I was. (laughs) Sometimes our fun times sort of get ruined. Sometimes when we're having a great time, a rule changes and we have to do something differently. Sometimes we're playing with somebody and having a wonderful time and things sort of change sort of almost immediately from what we thought we were doing to something new. Sometimes we can get angry really, really quick or we can get sad really, really quick. One of the things that this time has taught me, I think, a little better is patience, is waiting for things to happen and sort of sitting in the moment, right? I know that sitting is not some of your favorite things. You're tired of sitting in front of Zoom for class. You're tired of sitting uh, in front of Zoom for all kinds of stuff. But one of the things I want you to do with me this week, and maybe for the next couple of weeks, kids, is I want you to try to sit and ask your parents to set a timer or set, you know, use your watch or your Fitbit or whatever. I want you to try to sit for 20 seconds and not move and not say anything and just let your mind sort of think about what God wants for you. Maybe you ask God a question like, I'm kind of frustrated right now. God, what can I do to feel better? Maybe it's that you're mad at someone and you can say, God, I want to I forgive this, this person. And if you'll sit still and be patient, God will give you an answer to your prayer. God will allow you to understand what's next. I know it's hard. It always is when we're trying to do patience. I have failed a number of times. But right now, one of the kindest things we can do is to stop and be patient and love each other and pray that God helps us through these tough times. Let's pray, kids. Holy and gracious God, continue to be with us as we are called to be with each other. Holy God, thank you for these kids, these families. Be with them as they continue to move through this tumultuous time. Amen. All right. those of you who are here, you get to see what happens when the slide goes up. Karen has to get ready. (laughs) Today we are reading one of the most famous passages in the New Testament, particularly in the Gospel of Matthew. 
When the four Gospels were written, they each one had to figure out how they were going to start. What was the first thing they were going to share? And it's different for the different Gospels. In Matthew, it starts with a Sermon on the Mount. He went up on the Mount and he taught using the Beatitudes. In Mark, the very first thing that Jesus does is an exorcism. In Luke, he preaches in his hometown and is not accepted. And in John, his first act of ministry is the wedding at Cana. These say something different about who John and uh, Mark and Matthew uh, and Luke thought about Jesus. Matthew wanted him to teach, first and foremost. So here are these verses that I believe are extremely well known. Matthew 5, 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, as we come into this moment to talk about your word, may we receive it so that we will be blessed and be a blessing as we hear it and as we live it in the world. Amen. When I was going to graduate school to get my PhD, I had to take two languages. Uh, one of them had to be Latin. Because I was doing a PhD in liturgical studies, which meant studying worship documents, most of the early documents of the church were originally in Latin. That's how the Roman church developed them and wrote them. When I was trying to decide what my second language would be, they offered me two choices, German or French. Now, I had just taken Latin, and I had heard my dad say about five things in German throughout my life, and one of them uh, was, can I have a beer, please, uh, from a man who does not drink. And I saw the language and how it just got very complicated. Words just got longer and longer and longer to change them. And so I took French. I only had to be able to read it, not speak it. And so I am fluent in reading Latin, not so much French anymore. When you look at the Latin Vulgate, the original Bible that is in Latin, Beati Sunt is blessed be. Beati Sunt, it means blessed. Now, a lot of times we think today that being blessed means you have great wealth, you have great property, things are a part of your life. There's a whole section of our world who believes that blessings come in monetary or physical things. But that's not the kind of blessing that Jesus was talking about, and it was not the kind of blessing that Matthew wanted to share with others. See, the Jewish people and their leaders had lived up to a set of laws for almost their entire history, especially from the leaving, the exile, uh, the moving away from uh, Egypt and their exile there, moving towards uh, their homeland. They received... Ten Commandments, right? Many of you remember them. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not, shalt not commit adultery, right? These are called the Decalogue, the Ten Laws, the Ten Rules. And for the vast majority of the Jews, that was not just one part of the law for them. It was only a small part of the law for them. We believe that there are only about ten laws in the Old Testament. There are over 600, actually. There are 600 commandments in the Old Testament. 
What Jesus did with this moment, this very first teaching of the Gospel of Matthew, is he didn't say what you can't do. He says if you're in this situation, this is what's going to happen. If you're meek, you're going to inherit the earth. If you're mourning, you're going to receive compassion and love and guidance. If you are uh, betrothed or, or uh, downtrodden, you are going to be lifted up. It is about the not the, the what we don't do, but what we should do, what we ought to do. Now, a lot of Lutherans get really frustrated about what we should do or ought to do because the basic tenet of Lutheran faith is that we are saved by faith alone. We don't have to do anything. But a second part of Lutheran faith is that because we are saved, we want to do things. We are compelled by the grace and the love that God has given us to do things for others. When it gets to the moment about mourning, it often reminds me of Ecclesiastes 3, where there's a time to be born and a time to die. In this moment, he's talking about mourning in a number of different ways. It's like one phrase that has lots of different meanings. Those who mourn included those who had lost a loved one. Those who mourn were folks who had not been a part of society, those who were outcasts. Those who mourn were folks who were sinful and felt like they had failed in their life and they needed God to renew them. Mourning can take all different kinds of of iterations. There are so many ways that people mourn and grieve. My niece, Rory, is a labor and delivery nurse. She told a story the other night, and I'm not going to tell you where it was or any names or anything like that, but she told us a story on Thursday night. She said that she was there helping a young couple through their delivery process. They were both 19 years old. They weren't sure how they were going to parent anyway. They were very anxious. They had not had any prenatal care because they were 19. They couldn't afford it, or they didn't want anyone to know that they were pregnant until later on. When the baby was born, what they discovered is that the umbilical cord had wrapped around this baby's wrist, which meant that the hand did not form. There was sort of a little nub with what looked like some knuckles there, and that was all. When anything happens like this, the labor and delivery nurses and the, the doctors that are there, the OBGYNs, they're, they're trying to do everything they can to keep the parents calm. So they took the little boy and they walked over, they washed him off a little bit, and one of the nurses came over and explained what had happened. And the young woman said, is he alive? And they said, absolutely. Well, let me see my son. And they brought this little boy over there, and she looked at him, and she loved him. And the dad looked at him, and he loved him. And they nicknamed him Nubby. Nubby. The little nubs where his fingers might have been. I don't know how long he'll keep that nickname. They were so thankful that he was a part of their lives that this one imperfection that others might judge him on or, or it may stop him from doing some things in his life, they weren't looking at that. They were looking at this precious child of God that they had just received. Now, I know at some point these parents are going to mourn. They're going to grieve a little bit what might have been. They may grieve a little bit when he doesn't uh, make the baseball team because he can't transfer his glove fast enough. They may mourn if he really wants to play piano and he can only do it one hand and he feels like it's not good enough. But this little boy, from the moment that he was born, was loved and cared for by his parents. From the moment this child was born, they knew he was different, but he was theirs. He was theirs, and that's all that mattered. It was this little life that had come into the world, not completely perfect by the world's standards, but by theirs. He was perfect. He was the result of their union. He was the result of their love. And they took this child into their arms and loved him for who he was. Not for who he might have been, not for who he might be in the future. They loved him in that moment. Grieving and mourning happens for all of us. I got a couple of 
messages this week from folks who said, I wanted to turn in a picture, but I just can't watch it if my loved one's on that screen. Others were like, I forgot to turn it in. Is it too late? And up until last night, I put a couple of more in. How we grieve is different for different people. Some people wail and moan and they cry out loud and they throw things and they punch pillows. Some people just go off on their own and they're just very, very quiet and don't want to talk to anyone. Some people need folks around them to buoy them up, to help them through it. What I know is that Jesus was teaching not what you can't do, but what you should do. And so when Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall receive comfort. That is not just a, a rule. That is a call to action. It is for us to comfort. It is for us to raise up. It is for us to help folks who are feeling completely just bruised and battered right now. And there's a lot of folks who feel this way. They, you feel it. People who are at home and can't get out yet. People who have lost loved ones to COVID-19 or lost uh, income or, or their children are being educated in a way that doesn't completely feel natural or helpful to them right now. We're all grieving. We're all mourning how we should live together. Are we living the way we should? Or are we not? We're mourning the loss. We're mourning the the changes that have happened so dramatically. The last time we gathered in this sanctuary was 35 weeks ago. 35 weeks. And every single time that we came into this space, the guys in the booth and Chris and I up here, we imagined where you sat. I had the Deutschleys on that side. I knew where Laura and Stan would sit. I knew where the Becks would sit. I knew where the Simon family were. They're up a little higher, closer than they used to be. I knew where the Mayberries would be. And I looked out and I saw you, but at the same time, I was grieving too. And some of you were grieving not being able to be here. The last seven months have been hard on all of us. The last seven months have been painful for families who lost a loved one and couldn't celebrate their death with a suitable service that they wanted. Folks who have been sick have not been able to go anywhere. Some of your kids and your grandkids have lost their jobs. Some of your favorite restaurants and shops are not going to make it. But the thing that continues to gnaw at me is that in these 35 weeks, we have stayed united in every way we could. We have prayed with you on Sunday mornings. We have prayed for you on Sunday mornings and on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. You have continued to pray and support this church. We have continued to reach out in all the ways that we've been able to. You see, blessed are those who take care of one another. Blessed are those who love their neighbors and treat them well. Blessed are those who proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ just by being kind and compassionate and caring in the world. Blessed are those who mourn this day, for they shall be comforted. And that's our job, too. I have no idea what will happen to Nubby. I don't know even what his given name is going to be. But in my mind, I see parents showing that kid all the things that he can do. They'll train him to be a left-hander because it was right that was gone. Maybe he'll actually be a left-hander. Maybe he'll pitch in the majors. Maybe he'll be a scientist and help discover the cure for viruses in the future. Maybe he'll be a stay-at-home dad and care for his kids. Maybe he'll be a high school heartthrob. I don't know. What I know is his parents and the way that they love him now is going to help him through his own grief and mourning. We're called to love one another. 
And that's been hard the last few months because we haven't been together. It's also been hard because we are in this tumultuous time because of COVID, because of Black Lives Matter, because of the election. And I don't have an easy answer. All I'm saying is that I'm praying for all of us. I'm praying for all of us that as we mourn, as we grieve, as we move forward, that we do that together, that we love one another despite our imperfections, that we care for one another when we mourn and when we grieve, and that we share God's love the way those parents welcomed that little child into their family. You in this room and you at home are a part of our family, and no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what stage you are in your faith tradition, you are beloved. Beate sunt, blessed are. Beante sunt, blessed are. Amen. moment in our service, we're going to pause to remember those who we have lost. The first list that I'm going to do are deaths that occurred in 2019. They will be on a plaque that will be dedicated and placed into Founders Way. But also, we've lost some folks in 2020, so I'll share those as well. I would invite you to be in prayerful remembrance, uh, to uh, just listen and hear the names of these who went before us. The 2019 Gloria Day deaths. Max Amos Jr. Shirley J. Breyer. Janet M. Chapman. 
John Jack B. Chapman. Arthur Crowther. Elaine Grossi. Marilyn May Haug. Thomas K. Headley. Mary Ellen Herger. George M. Holzhauer. John A. Catherine. Doris Kerrigan Bajinski. Richard A. Kozub. Norma A. Kunkel. Craig A. Lurch. Betty M. Majeria. Frederick E. Muller. Anita Blair Prouty. Sandy Rosenthal. Charles P. Trubb. Ellen, excuse me, Evelyn Mueller Wegman. And Janet E. Winter. Those who we've lost since the beginning of 2020. Eileen Graby. Elizabeth Betty J. Kissel. Doris M. Marshall. Isabel Mitzi Muller. Richard Mull. Donald Fender. Andrew L. Ranieri. Shirley Remy. Christian Heinrich Tamir. Thomas J. Windmeyer, Jr. These are the ones that we have lost connected to this community. I invite you now to pause for a minute and name those persons who are important for you, those that we have lost, those we have loved, those we continue to mourn. Take a moment to pay a, some a recognition to them as well. Holy God, bless all of these families that these names represent. Bless their legacy, bless their relationships. May those who lost to them continue to feel their presence. May those who mourn them receive comfort and love. May those who follow them know the way, the truth and the light is through Jesus Christ. Amen. At this point in the service, I will lift up prayers. These are the prayers that are sent to me either through email or Facebook. We may begin also to receive prayer concerns here in church, but likely they will be written out. So here are the concerns of this week. Let us pray. For everyone dealing with COVID, those who are sick, those who are caring, for those who are sick and those who are mourning the loss from this pandemic, for first responders and hospital personnel, for truck drivers and grocery store clerks, for teachers and parents trying to school their kids in the best ways possible, for Fred Betts as he continues to heal at home, for Fred and Diane Betts' three-week-old granddaughter Parker Sparks, who is in Abingdon Hospital on IV antibiotics for an infection of some sort, for Bruce Whitaker, who has been diagnosed with bronchitis and also tested positive for COVID-19, for everyone's safety as we vote, for our nation to heal and to find ways forward no matter what happens, for Faye Glass suffering from pneumonia in an ICU right now, for Alice and her husband, Mike, Kim was at the post office yesterday and Mike passed out, hitting his head quite hard. For Colleen's partner, Michelle, who is sick 
and for Michelle, who is in the hospital right now. For Ron Kuntz, who had a car accident this past week and is hospitalized, receiving some tests. For Rich McMaster, who has COVID-19 and also suffers from breathing issues. For Terry, a young mom recently diagnosed with serious breast cancer. For Cindy's son, PJ, they're asking for some guidance during this time where he's in the midst of a fork in the road. For Pete and April, a husband and wife who tested positive for COVID-19. For Brian in his quest for a job and healing for himself and his wife. For Leo and his family dealing with his multiple cancer diagnosis. For Lisa B in the midst of a cancer, breast cancer uh, treatment plan. For Paul McDonald continuing to recover from knee replacement surgery. For Owen, this little boy who's so sick but so joyous. He's trying to get as strong as he can to potentially have a heart transplant. God, we know that you're a part of all of these situations where care and comfort are needed. Help us to be a part of that caring, oh God. Gracious God, we give thanks for those who are gathered in their homes with us and those who are here in our sanctuary. We have been so blessed in this church, so blessed financially, so blessed with support, so blessed in the ways that we've been able to connect together. Help us, God, to continue to move forward in all the ways you call us. God, thank you for your son, for the way he came and lived among us and taught us not just what not to do, but what we should do because of the grace that we've been given. Holy God, we thank you especially for the prayer he taught his disciples because it was in those moments when they heard his voice and learned how to continue to speak to him and is when we say these words today that we're connected with Christians all around the world and for the last millennia and we say the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite those of you at home to gather your communion elements and for those of you who are here to be in mindful prayer about what we're about to participate in. holiest meals, holiest moments that we have as a congregation, as a community of faith. I know today feels somewhat odd. Some of you are sitting here knowing you can't have communion until later. Some of you are at home, so grateful to have communion, and I wish we could all have communion together, and someday I believe we will be back doing that. Right now, we do everything we can to keep each other safe. When Jesus went into Jerusalem, he wanted his disciples to have some time together. He wanted to prepare them for what was to come. So he sent his disciples to go find a place for them to stay, and they found an upper room. And in that room they gathered. In the same room were the disciples who would fall asleep while he was praying in Gethsemane. In that room was a disciple who for 30 pieces of silver would betray Jesus. And in that room was the rock of the church, Peter, who would deny Jesus three times. Jesus knew that. He knew them. But they were served this meal anyway. 
because they were a part of his family. They were a part of his ministry. They were ones that he loved. They were beloveds of his. When we receive communion, when we partake in communion, it is one of those moments where grace comes down and touches us. It is one of those moments when Jesus is present with us, even maybe more than at other times. It was during that meal that he taught his disciples. He shared with them. They may have talked about their misgivings. They may have shared a joke or two. There may have been some of the women and the kids who might have been traveling with him sort of on the edges, and maybe they were being a little too loud. Jesus, in the midst of that meal, took bread. He thanked God for that bread, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took a cup, he gave thanks to God for it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all. When we receive the elements, it doesn't matter to me if it's Oreos you dip in milk, if it's a bran muffin with your coffee, if it is blessed elements up here. When you receive the grace of God in this meal and share it with one another, you are receiving one of the greatest gifts of our life as faithful disciples. I'm going to ask you to play for a few moments. Those of you who are at home, please share your communion elements with one another. Those here on the stage, I'll set something up for you. For those who are here, I am blessing your elements now, and they will be available for you at the back table as you leave. pray. Holy God, as we receive these elements now and later, may we feel your presence, your grace, and your love. May the Holy Spirit, through these elements, strengthen us so that we can face the coming days. May we know your perfect love. Amen. Father, name of the Son, name of the Spirit, 
Lord, we come and gather together. Lift up your name. Call on our Savior. Call on your grace. Name of the Father. Name of the Son. In the name of the Spirit. Lord, we come and gather together. Lift up your name. Call on our Savior. Fall on your grace. We hear the joyful sound of our offering. Let your saints bow down, let your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves. Our God saves. There is hope in your name. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son, name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, gather together, lift up your name, call on our Savior, fall on your grace. We hear the joyful sound of our offering, as your saints bow down, let your people sing, we will rise with you, lift it on your I just changed masks. It's also a little bit hot in here. We'll see. No. No, it's in Dallas. <laughs> here it goes. Dallas Cowboys. No. All right, now, I knew they would do it. I knew they would do it. There was no doubt. Listen, as we begin to wind down, I got a few announcements to, to tell you about, but... Uh, I am so glad that you guys are here with us today. I'm so glad, whether you're at home or in this sanctuary, we are so delighted to have you here. After I do the blessing, you will be released from the back out first, all right, we, we're, so that we're not doing a lot of cross-contamination. So please wait until one of the ushers dismisses you uh, so that you may leave. A couple of announcements. One, uh, we are going to have a congregational meeting on November the 15th. Uh, we will be electing council members, uh, new council members. Uh, if you have been thinking about being a council member and you have your application, please get those in as soon as you can uh, so that we can send those out. Uh, we will have two Zoom sessions, one at noon and one at 7 o'clock. 
A couple of other things coming up this week. We have Bible study on Thursday at 1 uh, and our community conversations Tuesday at 1 uh, and Thursday at 7. It is an amazing thing to receive God's grace, whether that's through communion or mourning, whether that's through a football game and the love, the gentle ribbing back and forth of communities. Please just not... Please don't take out our third string quarterback tonight. <laughs> Please. <laughs> May you feel the grace and love of God. May you know that God is with you in your mourning and in your rejoicing. May you feel the love of God as you move out into the world. And may you share that love with others because that's what Jesus is all about. Feeling it and sharing it. Go in God's peace. Amen. Thank you.